our picks for the top 10 worst movie plot twists. 92 to 5 to 5 4. For this list, we've chosen big screen endings that enraged, frustrated, or just plain bewildered audiences and critics alike. Before you watch any further, beware that this list will obviously contain spoilers. We will tell the others. He was killed by the creatures. Number 10, Ghost Wife, Safe Haven. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not close by city standards. I'm Joe, by the way. When Katie arrives in North Carolina, it seems she has big secrets. As she starts to fall for a widower named Alex and becomes friends with her neighbor Joe, we learn more and more about her, even suspecting that Katie is a murderer. What is this? But it turns out that she isn't, and her abusive drunk husband is just claiming that so he can have an excuse to look for her. That was a stupid young girl that got into a relationship with the wrong man. How am I supposed to believe that? So, is that the plot twist? Nope. The twist is that Joe is actually the ghost of Alex's dead wife, and she has been making sure Katie is right for Alex throughout the whole film. I only wish I could be there somehow to meet you. Control issues much? And maybe in some ways, I am. Number nine, Mandarin, Trevor Slattery, Iron Man 3. Some people call me a terrorist. I consider myself a teacher. After he sanctions several terrorist attacks and blows up Iron Man's house, audiences were really excited to see the Mandarin in the flesh. My disciples just destroyed another cheap American knockoff. The Chinese theater until they actually did. You see, it turns out that the evil Mandarin is just a drunk British actor named Trevor Slattery. They gave me things. They gave me this palace. They gave me plastic surgery. They gave me things. And this actor is as surprised to find out about his terrorist persona as audiences were, since he had no idea such things were occurring in his name. Killian? Killian. He created you. He created me. As is later revealed, the Mandarin was a lie invented by Aldrich Killian to cover up the fact that his disability cure was kinda blowing up veterans. Yeah, Sir Lawrence Oblivier. And that he was the real terrorist. Ooh. It was always me, Tony. Right from the start. I am the Mandarin! Number eight, Just a Vision. The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part Two. After four, arguably dismal movies, plenty of people were more than ready to see all of the characters in Twilight be brutally murdered, and that's exactly what they got. <laughs> Jasper, Jane, Caius, Marcus, Aro, and Ringo, and all the others get the chop in the final installment of this romantic fantasy saga. <laughs> Except, gotcha! Because the battle sequence was just a vision being shown to Aro of what would have happened if there was an epic and awesome battle. Since Aro decides not to wage war, the coolest scene in the franchise is made completely irrelevant. Number 7. Mark Ruffalo's Scheming, Now You See Me. A very good eye, sir. Thanks. For a film about tricks, this caper thriller sure did not know how to pull one off. This is bullshit! Whoever thought of this is a sick sadist! A group of magicians is assembled by a secret leader. The plan? To rob insurance magnate Arthur Tressler. Hey, what do the kids call it these days? Oh yes, that's right, magic. Just answer the question. Okay. Okay. Smart ass. The only man who can stop them is FBI agent Dylan Rhodes, played by Mark Ruffalo. You know, the less angry half of the Hulk. How did you do that? I have no idea, but I'm sure there's a logical explanation. Luckily for the magicians, though, he's a bit of a moron. Except in reality, Dylan doesn't want to stop the Four Horsemen. Why? Because he's the guy that brought them together. So we're supposed to believe that this guy has been able to make his way all the way up the ladder at the FBI, all while acting like a total moron. Why? Why? Number six. It was Jim Carrey all along. The number 23. <laughs> In this psychological thriller, Walter Sparrow is given a book called The Number 23. Played by everyone's favorite Grinch and least favorite Scrooge, the animal control officer slowly becomes obsessed with the book, especially when he finds out that the last chapter, Number 23, is missing. It wasn't the happiest of endings. It wasn't an ending at all. 
after chapter 22, there was nothing but the question. As the movie wears on, Jim Carrey's character slowly discovers that he wrote the book and that the murder described in it is something he did in real life. It was a whole hour before the doctor arrived, and in that uncertain hour, my eight-year-old mind raced. Really? Can't Jim Carrey go back to being the kind of funny, mentally unstable guy like in Me, Myself, and Irene? I want you to leave, Egg. You need to leave before... Before what? Before you kill me? Number five, just a fear. Savages. They will attack us. They're f***ing savages. Surrender is not defeat. After 90 minutes of gritty realism, it looked like this crime thriller's climax was going to be realistic. After their shared girlfriend is kidnapped by a cartel, pot dealers Ben and Sean capture the cartel leader's daughter. Give me my daughter! Now! An exchange is organized, but a shootout erupts. Great fall. Several characters die. Go! Ben is wounded and he, Sean, and the girlfriend Ophelia all overdose to die together. Except that was all just Ophelia's fearful thoughts of what might happen. That's the way I imagined it. But the truth has a mind of its own. In actuality, the good guys live happily ever after. And for some reason, so does the cartel enforcer, who's also a rapist and a decapitator. Lotto and Azul created a new cartel. The Azulados. Number four, modern day. The village. My intentions are true to my word. I think of nothing but the people of this village. M. Night Shyamalan has a reputation for giving his films terrible twists, and this is no exception. There are secrets in every corner of this village. The psychological thriller appears to be set in a rural village in the 19th century that is being terrorized by monsters, or so it would seem. But in fact, none of this is true. Mile 27, there's a girl. I'm gonna check it out. The story is actually taking place in modern time, and the village is one in which a small cult of people, many of whom are unaware of what really goes on in the outside world, is living in a secluded forest. The monsters? Just the village elders in fancy dress. The whole film is basically an over-serious two-hour episode of Scooby-Doo. Wait, you, you're not... you're not tricking me, are you? Number three. Water, water, everywhere. There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? From Shyamalan to Shyamalan, we return to the king of god-awful twists for number three. Well, the aliens can't read our minds. In Signs, Mel Gibson and his family slowly realize that aliens have landed. The tension is slowly and masterfully built up until one weakness is found. Water. Yes, water. You know, that thing that's spattered all over the planet? The liquid that comes out of the tap in everyone's house. The naturally existing phenomenon that literally falls out of the sky and is in the air vapor? You're kidding us, right? The aliens are supposed to have superior intelligence and they didn't plan for this? Guess not. I don't think they like water. Let's hope they don't come back with raincoats. <laughs> Number two, 9-11. Remember me. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want? Robert Pattinson breaks into this top ten once again. This time, it's for Remember Me, a film that, ironically, will be forgotten quite soon. What's this one's plot twist? 9-11. Yes, apparently, if you're stuck trying to end a terrible romance film, throwing in an international tragedy will do just fine. That's like if The Notebook ended with footage of Columbine. This is lazy writing at its most emotionally manipulative peak. Before we get to the worst film twist of all time, let's have a look at some honorable mentions. Or rather, dishonorable mentions. Of course there was no file. It was simply bait. What I needed wasn't this form. Gareth's the only one with enough power and influence to get me out of jail. That one is based on the two worst books full of lies and distortion, like all bad propaganda. Look, um, WikiLeaks movie, it's more like the anti-WikiLeaks movie. They were undone, destroyed, after all of man's weapons and devices had failed. 
by the tiniest creatures that God and his wisdom put upon this earth. Number one, Abraham Lincoln, Planet of the Apes. I'm tired of this human.